红酒世界越懂越喜欢，欢迎大家收看本期的红酒世界名庄直播。我是红酒世界的高级编辑拉头。那在先前的直播中呢，红酒世界已经邀请到了来自法国波尔多、勃艮第、意大利和德国等地的著名酒庄。不过今天呢，我们是首次邀请到了来自法国罗讷河谷教皇新堡产区的博卡斯特尔酒庄来到我们的直播当中。坐在我身边的呢，就是博卡斯特尔酒庄的现任。庄主查尔斯·佩兰先生，这个教皇新堡产区啊，它在法国是一法是一个法国南部的明星产区，有着非常独特的风土和深厚的历史底蕴。而当我们说到这个产区的时候呢，一定会立刻就想到博卡斯特尔酒庄这一个老牌名庄了。所以今天呢，我们就跟着佩兰先生一起来了解一下博卡斯特尔酒庄的美酒和教皇新堡产区。首先呢，我们请佩兰先生来给我们自我介绍一下。Oh, nice to meet you, Mr. Hello,、yeah, nice to meet you. Thank you.、Um, could you please give us a self introduction? Yes, of course. So、uh, I'm Charles Perrin.、Uh, I'm 38 years old. And、uh, I'm the owner of Chateau de Beaucastel.、Uh, Chateau de Beaucastel has been in my family since、uh, 1909,、uh, and I am the fifth generation、uh, to take care of the estate with my brothers and my cousins.、Uh, we work in family, so we take all the decisions in family, in the vineyard, in the cellars, and in sales together.、Um, The property is a unique plot of 100 hectares, and we produce two white wines, Chateau de Beaucastel White and Roussan Vieille Vigne. Well, first, could you please tell us where is the chateau located?、Uh, the vineyard、uh, is located、uh, in Provence,、uh, in south of France, in the small village of Chateauneuf du Pape. This is the southern part. Uh, of Rhone Valley, and it's nearby Avignon.、Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh,、uh, we can see that the name,、uh, the name Chateau Neuf du Pape, has an obvious religious meaning. So, could you please tell us the history of this place? Yes, of course. It was the popes.、Uh, they were settled in Avignon、uh, during the 14th century, and、uh, they decided to build a summer residence. It was on the eighth of the village of the village of Chateau de Beaucastel, of、uh, Chateau du Pape, sorry,、uh, and so、uh, they built、um, a castle, a summer residence, and they decide to put some Chateau du Pape wine at every dinner, and it, finally、uh, the wine became the official wine of the popes. During the festivities, a lot of very important persons, ambassadors, kings, queens. Came and tasted the wine and loved the wine, and so at this time we export a lot in Italy, Germany, and also Great Britain.、Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh,、uh, and the pattern of two crossed keys are commonly seen on the bottle of Chateau Neuf du Pape wines. Uh, but uh, while we can see that the pattern of Bugastel is different, so、uh, what is what is the meaning of the two patterns? The the two crossed keys. Uh, it's the official bottle of Chateau Neuf du Pape.、Uh, Chateau Neuf du Pape created it in、uh, 1937. The two keys, in fact, it's the keys of Saint Peter. Therefore, they are the keys of paradise.、Mm -hmm. uh, we used this bottle during a long time, but we decided to change in、uh, 1996. To have our own bottle, the Bocastel, the official Bocastel bottle with this、uh, coat of arms.、Um, in fact, this coat of arms、uh, is the official coat of arms of the first owner of Bocastel, Pierre de Bocastel. And if you come to Bocastel, you will see it engraved in the dining、uh, room of my family. Thank you. We know that today Bugastel belongs to the Behan family, and uh, uh, the previous owner Yak Behan,、uh, your grandfather, my grandfather, has, yeah, has made great contribution to the chateau. So, uh, uh, what influences has he, has、uh, has he bring to this chateau?、Uh, at the head of the estate until 78,、uh, so my grandfather Jacques Jacques Perrin. 
was a key figure, was a key figure uh, in development uh, of Chateau de Beaucastel and his wines. Um, this visionary was first to cultivate organically the, the estate since the 50s and after to have a biodynamic culture in the, in the 70s. So it was really, really uh, a pioneer because at this time it was not exactly used to do this kind of culture. And it was very difficult for him to explain to his peers uh, how it's important to keep uh, organic culture, to keep um, the soil like it was ever. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. so this is the first point. The second point of his visionary it's to keep all the 13 grapes. We are talking about later mm -hmm. about all the grapes, but he was in love with all the 13 grapes and in particular with Mourvedre. Mm -hmm. Mourvedre uh, is a particularity, and we will talk also later, of, uh, of Hommage à Jacques Perrin. And uh, it was not easy for him. Uh, he worked very, very hard, uh, but finally what we do in the field, what we do in the vineyard, in the cellar, uh, maybe it's, it, it's because it's of, f for him we do that, because he, he, he finds a lot of new things, he was a very, very visionary man. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, here's a question about the vineyard. Uh, what is the location and the size of your vineyard and what are the grapes planted? Uh, we are located um, in the northern part of uh, the appellation, uh, maybe the, the coolest part, and uh, with a lot of wind. We call that the Mistral, a very, very strong wind. Um, Bocastel is unique because it's 100 hectares in one single plot. Uh, and in this soil, in this vineyard, we planted uh, 13 different grapes. We've got a lot of Grenache, 30%, Mourvedre, 30%, 10% of Syrah, 10% of Cinceau, uh, a little bit of Cunoise also, 8%, and small parts of Roussanne, Bourboulinque, Clairette, Picpoul, Picardan, also Vacarez, Terre Noire, and Muscardin. Mm -hmm. uh, it's quite complicated. You know, all these grapes, I understand, but you have to think about Grenache, Mourvedre, Syrah, Cinceau. Mm -hmm. And there is a multitude of terroirs, and each variety will be planted separately uh, on a particular soil. Um, it will be grown separately, it will be picked up separately, and it will be vinified separately, mm -hmm. all these different grapes. After the two fermentations, we are going to try to taste each uh, grapes and we are going to blend them. Mm -hmm. It's a long work, a family work. We begin the, the blending time at the beginning of January and we finish it uh, in June. So this is six, a uh, six month work, but it is family work. Mm -hmm. Nobody, even the family, can do this thing because it's very, very important moment, period for us, for the vineyard, for the, for the estate, when we blend the different grapes to do only one wine, Chateau de Beaucastel, mm -hmm. or Hommage à Jacques Perrin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just now you have mentioned the Mistral. Yeah, uh, it's, it is said that this wind is, uh, plays a very important role in the vineyard. So how does this wind influence the grapes? Uh, Yes, this is a very, Mistral is a very strong uh, wind that blows 120 uh, 20 days a year and uh, it can exceed uh, 100 kilometers per hour. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, very, very strong wind. But this is a wind that vine growers uh, really appreciate because, uh, first of all, uh, it reduces the heat. Uh, always when you have a lot of wind, uh, you have a, lo a cooler clim climate. So it's very important. Also, it reduces the pluviometry. Um, you have less 
uh, uh, rain mm -hmm. and you always have after a day of rain you will always have three days of wind mm -hmm. so we don't have any disease mm -hmm. with uh, rain and so it's very important mm -hmm. to, uh, to to reduce disease in the in the vines and also at the end of the, at the beginning of the spring end of the winter we don't have any frost because the wind uh, makes some air flows and we don't have any frost since a long time now. Mm -hmm. mm, okay, thank you. Uh, what types of soil do you have in your vineyard and uh, what are the functions of the soil? When you come to Bocastel, uh, you will be very surprised uh, with, the, with the terroir, with the soil, because you won't see any grass, you won't see any soil, uh, but only big rolled pebbles, we call that galley mm -hmm. uh, It was a long time ago, 10 million years ago, uh, the sea covered uh, Chateau de Beaucastel, the, the vines, and it was the Rhone, uh, would, uh, would take some uh, um, uh, stones from the Alps and roll them and deposit them in front of Beaucastel. And uh, this stone can be found up to five meters deep, so it's incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, and they are essential for two reasons. First of all, uh, they protect the vines from too high or too low temperature. First reason. And second reason, uh, they allow to rain, to drain uh, in the soil and keep the damp for longer. So it's very, very an important part of our terroir, Galerouli. Thank you. Oh, it, it is said that Chateau de Bocastel um, replant one to two hectares of vines each year. So what is the function of doing that? Uh, the vines of Bocastel, at Bocastel are on average 60 uh, years old. Uh, the hommage à Jacques Perrin uh, plot is something like one century uh, years old like Roussan Vieille we've got also uh, very, very old vines. Mm -hmm. Our vines enjoy our terroir uh, and live a very, very long time, as you see. Uh, but sometimes, nevertheless, certain grapes, uh, varieties must be replaced. Sometimes because uh, vines are too old or sometimes because they died with a frost uh, during the year. Uh, so maybe something like uh, 1% every year of the, the, the vineyard will be replaced. We do organic farming and biodynamics also. And when we pull out a plot, we have to wait 10 years before we planted uh, the vines because the soil has to be regenerated. So it's a long time, but it's a necessary uh, work and we, we have to wait 10 years, so it's very long. So it's mm -hmm. around 1% everywhere. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, uh, we know that uh, the finest wine from Bougastel is Hommage à Jacques Berham, uh, which is both meaningful and uh, of great quality. So uh, what was the initial purpose to make this wine? My grandfather, uh, Jacques, um, was a great lover of Mourvedre. Uh, at a time when, as I said, when everyone uh, planted uh, only Grenache, uh, he fought to keep the 13 different grapes and particularly uh, the Mourvedre. Uh, so today we uh, have the luck to have a very, very old vines, more than one century, mm -hmm. uh, a very, very old plot of Mourvedre uh, planted in the, so at the beginning of the, of the 20th century. Uh, but my grandfather died suddenly in 78. Mm -hmm. And my father, my uncle, my father Francois, my uncle Jean-Pierre, has to stop their studies and to work for Bocaster. And they have to learn the terroir, they have to learn how to make a great Bocaster like my grandfather. Mm -hmm. And during 10 years, each year, they taste all the different grapes and at each time, always a move ahead was the best. Always, always, each year, the Mourvedre was the best. So, in 89, uh, they decided, uh, they said, okay, that was right. Mourvedre at Bocaster is just exceptional. 
So uh, they decide to make a special cuvee um, with a majority of Mourvedre in homage à Jacques Perrin, in tribute mm -hmm. to Jacques Perrin. Mm -hmm. And at this time it was a huge success. Uh, so the first vintage was 89 and Robert Parker gave us the wonderful uh, rank of 100 points. It was the first time in the south part mm -hmm. of, uh, uh, in the southern Rhone Valley. Uh, it was the first time, so it was really, really uh, um, incredible. Also the Wine Spectator, mm -hmm. the, the famous uh, American magazine uh, Wine Spectator, named Beau Castel as, as the wine of the year. Mm -hmm. So the legend was on the way, uh, it was done. Thank you. Uh, I think that homage is a special one because it is not made every vintage. So uh, usually in what uh, situation will you make this wine? Uh, homage was not made every, every year until 2009. Since this vintage, uh, there has been a vintage homage every year. Uh, Mourvedre, Mourvedre uh, is the latest, lat latest grape variety uh, mm -hmm. to reach maturity. Mm -hmm. uh, we pick it at the end of October, that it's to say a month and a half after the beginning of the harvest. Mm -hmm. So it's a long, long time. And we need to have a wonderful weather during the months of September, of October, and we, have, we, we call that the Indian summer. Mm -hmm. So it's necessary to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful weather just to pick up at the right maturity uh, move ahead. This has all, not always been the case since, uh, but yes, it's, it, was not on the, it was not only the case, but since 2009, the weather conditions uh, at that time have been very favorable. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, what grape varieties is uh, homage banded with and what uh, functions are the, these varieties? The, the main grape in homage is Mourvedre. Um, it's a grape, it's often found by the coast, like in Bandol, for example. Uh, Mourvedre is an expression of terroir. It's powerful, but very elegant um, at the same time. Uh, but it's a grape that takes time. Uh, the vines can age a long time, as so can the wines. So it's very important to wait in the vineyard, in the cellar, and after taste, and also when you taste it. Um, you can find always a, f a, redu a tint of reductions mm -hmm. with Mourvedre. Uh, but once aired, uh, it gives nuts of uh, undergrowth, uh, mushroom porcini, uh, pine nuts, and some uh, Provence herbals, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, for the assembly, uh, when we blend, we blend with a small quantity of Grenache, mm -hmm. Syrah, and Sanso. But you have, when you think homage, you think Mourvedre. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, could you please tell us the winemaking process of homage from uh, harvest to bottling? The vine of homage are very old, as I said, 100 years old. Um, so we must therefore pay a lot of attention for them. 80% um, of the work is done in the vine, in the vines. If you have a wonderful berry, you will have a wonderful wine. So we do a lot, a lot of work in the vines. But each variety is unpicked up uh, separately, vinified separately. All the grapes are sorted by hand and totally distinct. Mm -hmm. We vinify Mourvedre and Syrah uh, separately because this is uh, reductive grapes. So we put them in big wooden casks uh, so they get plenty uh, oxygen. The other grape fermentation for the ferment the other grapes ferment is uh, in concrete tanks, uh, very hermetic because Grenache, Sanso, don't like, uh, don't like the, the oxygen. Uh, when the fermentations are finished, uh, we blend the four different grapes and we put them in very old barrels, old, uh, maybe 20 years old, 
uh, big barrels between 4,000 to 7,000 liters. Uh, and we wait and we wait during 18 months in this barrel. We don't reach wood in this barrel. We just want time and oxygen. We want to polish the wine. Then, after 18 months, we bottle. We wait, we wait four months for wine to rest. And so, between the harvest and the first bottle drink, you will have two years and a half. Thank you. Uh, could you please describe the classic style of homage from the uh, color, nose, palette to the finish? Uh, the color of homage uh, is always very intense and, and deep. Uh, the noise is gorgeous with red fruits, uh, figs, uh, black pepper and spices also. Uh, the mouth is round and lush. Uh, with a lot of flesh and intensity, backed by a great graphite structure. Um, it displays aromas of blueberries, uh, porcini mushroom, mm, black truffles, and meaty components. The wine is long, uh, is long with intense tannins. Uh, you, you, when you drink a, a homage, you will see it, it will be very long. You will keep it in mouth with, during a long time. And, after, uh, and also, the wine can be old during a long, long time. The best period to drink it, it's maybe between 10 to 20 years, but you can keep it during 20, 30, 40 years without any problem. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just now we said that uh, the homage is only made in the best vintages, but I think there must be some vintages that are even better. So could you please recommend some of the, the great vintages of homage? Uh, it's not easy to say for me, but uh, of course, to start, 89 mm -hmm. for me is mythical because since it's the first time, it's first vintage, so it was, uh, it was al it's always for me uh, a particular vintage. Mm -hmm. And with 90, uh, you have two wonderful vintages, uh, amazing years, looks like 2009 and 2010. Mm -hmm. um, 80, 98, sorry, uh, 1998 uh, is also very special because we've got a particularity in this, uh, d during this, um, this vintage. Uh, we put a lot of Grenache. We put 40, 45% of Grenache and exactly the same proportion of Mourvedre. Normally you have 60, 70% of Mourvedre. But this year in uh, 98, uh, it was it very particular because the Grenache was great this year. Mm -hmm. uh, with 2007 and 2015, you have also two amazing uh, vintages. You can hold this wine, I don't know, maybe 40 years without any problem because it, it's really, really fresh, a lot of fruit, a lot of power. It's incredible. And finally, I think we are going to have a wonderful vintage in 2016. Uh, I think maybe it will become a legend. I cannot tell too much because it's always in the cellar, it's not bottled yet, but I'm sure 2016 will be a wonderful, wonderful, one of the best, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, another important wine from Bogastel is the Chardonnay du Bab Red, which is blended with 13 varieties. Uh, so I think it is very uh, difficult to uh, blend them together. Uh, so why do you decide to use so many varieties in this wine? You know, Bocastel is often compared to a symphony. The 13 great varieties are 13 music instruments, musical instruments. For the balance to exist, it's necessary to have all the different instruments, all the varietal grapes, play music together. So, it's exactly like salt in pepper in a dish. Mm -hmm. uh, even in small quantities, some grape varietals are essential and can change everything in the wine. So, yes, it's a lot of work, um, a lot of family discussions, mm -hmm. sometimes hectic, but uh, 
we have been to the estate since 1909 now, and nobody else, I think, uh, could do it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, well, um, how is the style of Chardon of du Barbaret different from homage? They are like two members of uh, some family. Uh, we are very similar, but very two very different characters, in fact. Uh, Chateau de Bourcastel is a wine that seeks balance more anything else. Uh, it's not the most powerful, the most exuberant. The goal is to feel the 13 different grapes without one of them crushed the others. This is Chateau de Bourcastel. Mm -hmm. Hommage stands out in the room, you know. Uh, it has a lot of charisma. Uh, but when you put your noise uh, in there, you will find also a lot of complexity. Um, it's powerful, but a fine wine also. It's, it's quite similar and quite different also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And what plans do you have to further improve the, these two wines? We wish to continue the hard work of the previous uh, generation. Uh, while improving the wines for future generations. Mm -hmm. Me, I'm just passing through, I mean, it's not important. Mm -hmm. uh, the goal is the perennity of the family and Borcaster, really. Uh, we are now starting a long process of renovating Chateau de Borcaster. Uh, we are working with um, experts from around the world uh, to imagine how Bocastel will be in 30 years, 40 years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, how do you think of uh, the future of the wines in Chinese market? Um, I notice an increasing uh, interest for wines, uh, in, um, for, for my wines, for our wines uh, in, in China market. Uh, but you know, our wines are not easy to understand. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot of grape varieties. Uh, we are in the Rhone Valley, south of France, uh, and we produce small, small, small quantities. Mm -hmm. uh, Hommage à Jacques Perrin, you know, it's only, that depends on the vintage, but only between 4,000 to 8,000 bottles a year. Mm -hmm. So it's quite complicated, but you have to be a big fan to, to taste our wines, to buy your wine, because it's not easy to find it. But I'm... I see uh, there is more and more in China big fan of homage, and I'm sure uh, it will increase uh, mm -hmm. uh, for the next few years. Uh, how long do we need to decant homage before tasting it? Uh, it's not easy to say uh, because each vintage uh, is different. So, but let's have two simple principles mm -hmm. uh, for wines under ten years. Uh, open only two hours before serving. Mm -hmm. No decanting. You just open the bottle mm -hmm. uh, under 10 years. For wines over uh, 10 years, you decant to air and remove uh, the deposit, uh, but just before serving. It will be nice. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, the next question is, uh, is there any opportunity for the uh, Chinese wine lovers to taste and learn about your wines in the events held in China? Uh, yes. Um, I try to be more and more present uh, in, in China, Bocastel with, with Bocastel, with Hommage. Uh, we try to, to come three times a year. Um, we are going to participate in many shows and tastings everywhere. In May, for example, we will be at, the, at Vinexpo Hong Kong. Uh, and we are going to have other events uh, later. Um, we also have a WeChat account. If you want to follow uh, Bocastel, we can we put a lot of uh, information. Of course, you can go on mm -hmm. Wine World. It's, it's mm -hmm. the best way to learn about our wines. Mm -hmm. um, and if you have the possibility, come to France, come to visit us, come to taste our wines, uh, it will be uh, a pleasure. I would be delighted to, 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 to taste with you the wines. Okay. Uh, Mr. Berham, at the end of the interview, I'd like to ask you how you feel about this trip to Wine World. 
uh, I'm very honored uh, to participate to, to, to his live stream with, uh, with Wine World, with your team, with your customer. Um, you know, we spend a lot of time in the cellars, in the vineyard, uh, but we have to explain our wines because our wines are our culture. I'm, I'm very proud to share my culture mm -hmm. with you. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a pleasure to be with you and uh, I wish you all a very good day mm -hmm. and, uh, and a very good uh, tasting uh, with homage. Mm -hmm. 那我们今天的直播就到这里就要结束了，非常感谢佩兰先生能够来参与我们的直播，也感谢各位观众朋友们的观看。我们下期再见。uh, this is the end of the interview. Please say goodbye to the audience. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Honcho Choche, you are done, you are sieton. Juan. Merci à tous. Bonne dégustation. À très vite, j'espère, en France. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci à tous.